everybody. We're the Sci-Fi Sisters, or most of us. I'm Tamia, and I'm joined by my sister, Yvette. Hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and Sabrina. Sabrina, you're muted. Oh, yeah, because we're very whoop, whoop, professional. Again. Right? Got this. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, oops, family? Oops, <laughs> oops, oops right? Oops, oops. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, we're really excited to be here, uh, part of uh, Virtual TrekCon 4, VTC4. I see the chat pack is in the house. What's up, chat pack Strong family? Long chat. Six, seven, up, rule family. <laughs> Man, everybody's in there early, too. Everybody's in here. So as you see, we're short one member, but that's okay. Um, hopefully she'll be in. Uh, but if not, we're here to do... Da, 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 da. <laughs> the Sci-Fi Sisters Top 10 TNG episodes. I should say episodes. Episodes. Yeah. Episodes. Yes. Episodes. It we was, it again. Um, <laughs> it was um, kind of a trip coming up with this list. As usual, as per usual, We uh, can you believe we've actually done this enough now that there's an as per usual for it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> as per usual, our way of Coming up with our top 10, we had, first we had episodes that all four of us agreed upon. Then not many. We went to, yeah, there were not that many. <laughs> four, four chair turns. <laughs> were there four or three? I can't remember now. I think there were like three. Three, yeah. There were four. Yeah. And then we had episodes where three of us agreed on it. Right. And then we had episodes where... <laughs> At least two of us agreed on it. And that's how we came up with what is the Sci-Fi Sisters combined top 10. Right. Not, might I say, our personal top 10s, which were quite, quite different. So we hope that you guys can start guessing with us. We want to see, you know, which episodes are uh, ones that you would have put in your top 10 or how different it would have been for you. <laughs> Thank you, Muhammad. <laughs> we think it's a reasonable system too. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, um, but Yvette and Sabrina, doing this this time, how was this process for you guys? Definitely easier than the first time. Definitely easier than the <laughs> DS9 time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the thing is that there were so many that I had that you guys didn't have. I can't believe how many didn't yeah, make it. Too. You don't know how many we threw out. It's ridiculous. So it was yeah. it was great. That, that means it's a great show. Great franchise. That's what that means. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's what that means. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a lot more. There was a lot more. Um you know, to I don't know, it just seemed like a lot more to look through, even though it wasn't. But I just forgot how much of TNG that I really, really enjoyed, you know, because I'm such a Deep Space Nine head, you know, I just forget that there's a, there was so much more in TNG that was so wonderful. So, oh gosh, I see people putting in some, <laughs> some, um, some episode names right now. Yeah. Well, let's see, let's get, let's jump right into it. Um, hey, Nikki. Okay, so um, number 10, starting with number 10. Dun, 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 dun. Ready for the big reveal. Da -da. Our number 10 is Parallels. Okay, so anybody want to talk about why this is our on our top 10 list? Which one of you guys wants to take this one? Well, I put Don't it, everybody it was, jump at once. It was, uh, <laughs> it was on my list. This is one of the ones that I wanted because I, this is one of my favorite ones. It yeah. comes in late in the franchise. Mm -hmm. And it is one that I think we're going to see a lot of this in the ones that we pick. It starts something that spills over other things that we tend to love, uh -oh. which is no. Uh oh. Uh huh. Uh oh. No. It's right. <laughs> Am I freezing? Okay, we missed most of that, Sabrina. Just so you know, because your Wi-Fi blank. It was very boring. Oh no! I said this is the one. <laughs> yeah, that, it got, it, it's one that starts something that we love. It, it's it. A lot of these episodes have something in it. Like we said in our in our discussion, so many of these episodes had great scenes. It may not have been the best 
episode, but it was a great scene and we wanted to, you know, you remember the scene and then you look at the episode and you're like, well, man, the whole episode wasn't that great. But um, this one was right. all the way through. I mean, I loved every single scene and I didn't know what was going to happen and I couldn't figure it out. And then when you did figure it out, it was so obvious. So I love this one. Yeah, I really liked this one too. Um, you know, it took me a minute when you guys were like parallels, parallels. And I was like, <laughs> um, I was like parallels, you know, let me watch it again. Mm -hmm. And I watched it again and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot how much I loved this episode. And um, I particularly like it because it was a Worf centric episode. It was mm -hmm. finally one where we were starting to see Worf grow as a character. Um, and, uh, you know, instead of being like, no, Worf, no, bad idea, Worf, stupid idea, Worf, <laughs> right, no, right, right, right. Worf, you know, stop trying to kill everything, Worf. Right. You know? <laughs> well, he, he did, like, not know how to fight. Or, he did mess up on the trigger, so it was kind of like a regular Worf episode. <laughs> Worf fire, huh? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I like this. Uh, this was definitely one of my episodes. Um, um, I love this episode because of the history of it, mostly because this is one of the episodes that is um, that was playing when DS9 was on. Of course, you know, I'm going to bring DS9 into this. Um, <laughs> so this was actually this actually has the same star date as a DS9 episode. It, the DS9 episode that has the. Um, the people with the scales and the kids that smelled. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, Nor Nog made them smell or whatever. But I always like that part about this, that it with it, it plays into the par the, the parallels, the the the, the multi uh the multi universe type thing. You know, it's something else is going on with this. So um I love it because it it's it was multi universe, it was multi universe before multi universe was cool. You know, yeah, Star exactly. Trek was doing it already, you know. Um, there's no B story, right? It's and it's all it's like one of those ship ship shows, which I which I absolutely love. So I like yeah. I, I love this one. I, I love Sue's like, oh, the ugly dress episode. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep, same exact one. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Corn flake. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> that's no, that's our number ten. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if any of you guys had that on your top ten list, but we sure did. It was it was a damn fine episode. Okay, number nine. Hold, da, on, da, da, da. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Okay, all right, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, season three, episode sixteen. Can you name it? It's the Offspring. Ooh yeah. Ooh. That's a good one. <laughs> this is where Data creates Lal. When we first meet Lal, and um, and many of us fell in love with Lal. And uh, my favorite line from that episode is, "He's biting that female." <laughs> <laughs> now, you two were the two that had offspring on your list. Fran and yeah, I yeah. did not, but mm -hmm. not because this isn't one of our greatest and favorites but it was just really hard to get it down to to 10 and um so i know this is a favorite of your of yours so i'm gonna let you two talk about this one <laughs> um, okay well I, you, yeah you go first okay. go first okay well i was just gonna say that i like um one of the reasons that i love this episode is because it's the great to me it's the great uh, star trek debate you know versus you know sentience and life and and who has agency over their being um and that's what you know and and the argument is expressed so well in this episode and it's tragic right mm -hmm. you know and it's so sad like i think this episode just hits on every level all the right points for me at least yeah. it does i mean this is an episode that i never skip when it's when it's showing yeah yeah so this um like you said this is a great follow i love i love when tng follows through um because um i love i love that but everyone says it's not um you know it's a one episode you know it's always one episode but P tng always follows through it, it, i mean from the first episode to the last episode you know you have you know that that bottles in uh tng and this one follows in from measure of a man about data's rights 
And now we're talking about his right to have to be a parent. And I think it follows it follows through even more with the exocom, uh, the the right of life. You know, it. I love that about TNG, where it's it's smarter than you think it is. You know, because there's a lot of camp, there's a lot of Picard Picardisms. You know, Picard's uh, you know moral tropes, but uh, it's very smart with everybody else, and it's not always just Picard. And I, I just love this. This is one of Frank's first, and. Um, it is another ship show, um, which makes makes it perfect. Um, I love that the whole crew is in there. You know, they're talking. I love crew. The whole when we see everybody have a good uh, good part. So I, I love this one. I I always did. I think it's funny. Um, it's heartbreaking. You know, at the end when the ad the bad admiral says, you know, his hands were moving faster than he could that I could see. You know, it just puts some tears in your eyes. So I, I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And yeah, Melissa, Melissa you're right. This is so good. a Cisco Kid shirt. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> that Ciroc sister designed. <laughs> Okay, so I see that there are some people out there who did not agree with us about this episode, and I fully anticipated that. But, oh, really? I'm sorry. Okay. I can't make everybody happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's even more poignant now because of Picard. I mean, I think right. I love it even more because it it means so much more. You know, it's just not the offspring anymore. It's talk about follow through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. Exactly, I mean, yeah. Come on, this. I mean, I love. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! This, this right here. Yeah, but there's uh -huh. not four of it's four of us. So, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a couple of, couple of people that didn't vote. I, I swear, the reason why I didn't vote for it is only because you know me. I'm the one that likes you know pew pew pew. So <laughs> <laughs> that was the only exactly. reason. But I, I, this, I mean, you have to watch this one just for the fact that it is Jonathan Frakes' first directing, and it's the first, mm -hmm. you know, it's the first cast member directing a show, and this is what he comes up with. So you just knew he was going to be great right off the bat. You know, they yeah, said that they yeah, didn't yeah. get to choose this this episodes, but he was given this, and you know, just hit us in the feels. Yeah, he sure did. Mm -hmm. I, uh, so good, so yeah. good, so good. So good. Okay. <laughs> so you would, right now, I think most people are waiting for number eight. Well, you would be waiting for the wrong thing for a long time. <laughs> <because> <laughs> what we have here, boys and girls, is a tie. <laughs> so there's two number sevens or two number eights. I think I have them eight. as two number I have them as eight. two sevens. <laughs> Two it eights. doesn't matter which way we have it. They're Hold taking on. up two <laughs> spots, and they're in the same spot. I forgot Since about that. you that. put it that way, let me you change should, it. You, <laughs> you ready? You should tape us, you know, coming up with these. So that would be <laughs> right. <I> know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's where the juicy part is. <laughs> ready? <laughs> okay, ready. Lower decks and the drum head. Dun, da 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 da. Wow. <laughs> Uh, we were very split. We all love, I mean, well, not all of us love every, both of these episodes, but um, <laughs> two of eight. Yep. <laughs> but um, we all could agree that they belonged in the top 10 and it was just a matter of, what? okay, maybe we all couldn't agree for that they belonged in the top 10. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. The majority won. Okay. The majority just won. Say, yes. Just yes. ignore her. Over there. The majority <laughs> won on both of these episodes. Little Miss Hater. <laughs> Don't hate them. I dislike them. Okay, so I've I advocated for Lower Decks. Mm -hmm. um, is one of my all time favorite uh, Trek episodes. Period. Right. Um, but especially and Fran. you and, and Fran. Fran. Fran right. advocated for Lower Decks as well. And in my list, Lower Decks was actually higher ranked um, because I just love it that much. I love that look into characters that we don't know as well. I love that look into um, uh, the crew that was not the bridge crew. Like, how mm -hmm. the hell is this ship running? There's a lot of other people on the ship. Can we see some of them? I want to see what they do, you know? And I love the poignancy of the story um, that uh, 
<laughs> that, um, you know, is a story of re almost redemption, you know, for, um, for uh, uh, Sito. Mm -hmm. And um, there's just, so, it's a really rich story on a lot of level for these, on a lot of levels for these characters. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Lower Decks. Yep. And I think I'm the only one on this call that is a big fan of Lower Decks. So did you hear the cricket? <laughs> Nobody else has anything to say about it. Except for you no, guys. I, I, the thing about Lower Decks <laughs> is that, again, it's, as we were saying a minute ago, everybody claims that uh, TNG is episodic. But here we are mm -hmm. also connecting another episode and seeing something that happens yep. with uh, Ensign Cito go right, right, right on through. And you know they really developed that really well. And I wish they had. I wish they had made the other uh, character Paris, Tom Paris, so we could have seen that woven <laughs> right through. But okay, Lucerno, whatever. <laughs> oh, he changed his name at the academy because he was the admiral. Yeah, I, I wish they had kept the name. Yes. Uh, you know, or either call Paris Lucerno. I don't care what you do, but call him the same guy because that's the same guy. But. Um, I, I like this one. And I think one thing that I really wanted to point out to people is the person that directed this one, because you know, Sabrina has all this like totally useless information that you need. Uh, <laughs> the person that directed this is Gabrielle Beaumont and she was the very first woman to direct a Star Trek episode. And so here she is, she directed Booby Trap. And that mm. was the first time a woman was behind in the camera. And now, now here she, I, I love this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think right. we got that. Yep. yep. <laughs> Definitely got that one. So, um, I did, um, drumhead and I love drumhead. I think it is the first time that I took TNG seriously. Um, mm. I don't, and it's one of the, there's another one on this list that when it first came on, I don't remember watching it. Like I don't remember seeing it when it came, you know, during the first run, I don't remember it. I remember it like for BBC, when BBC would play, but I always would get it in the middle, the end, you know, it, I never saw the whole thing until TNG, I mean, Netflix. And I was like, yo, this is deep, <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. like the Kane mutiny, you know, uh, again, a Frank's, uh, I love it. It's a tie, tie in, um, uh, it, no, I'm sorry. It, it's a Frank's. It's entirely on the um, Enterprise. Um, it, it just, it's like one of those. It, it, it's it, you know your free, your freedom, security, freedom. Which one? Which one are we having here? You know, it, and it it just goes back to like 9/11, and you know, and mm -hmm. it's it, it was before its time, but it wasn't before its time. <laughs> I mean, we've been doing this forever with the uh, McCarthy um, hearings. We did all of that then, and you know, and then Wharf, you know, TNG Wharf. Right. Right. <laughs> TNG Wharf. She totally played Wharf. Oh, she played him, you know, and mm -hmm. he just fell into that trap so easily. You know, he was he was so offended by the Vulcan telling him, you know, we 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 didn't trust you because of your father. And then when he uh, compliment to him on his work. He just fell right into that trap about, oh, well, thank you very much, you know, and he became like the biggest, their biggest supporter and their biggest enforcer, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, dang, Wolf. <laughs> I mean, but that you was know, Wolf had, he had something to prove. I can yeah. see why he did always, it. Always, always. She, she yeah. pressed that button. That was the first thing about her that I was like, oh, this one here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah he's yeah. going to go above and beyond because he's the only Klingon and he's going to do whatever I say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he did. I love, I love um, what you had to say, Mohammed, too, about Drumhead, um, you know, being a timeless continuing connection to timeless continuing issues. Because that's what I was thinking mm -hmm. about. You know, every time I watch it, I think about um, Nazi Germany and mm. I, I think about how easily. Um, people felt, not easily, but like it was a really gradual transformation for the everyday person, right? And I right. see some, I see that happening in our own society so much too. You know, sometimes we, it's a, it can be a really thin line to cross into fascism, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. and and it's very scary. Um, and uh, that's another reason why I love this episode. I think Drumhead was one of our, wasn't Drumhead unanimous or was it three of us? Three. three, yeah. It was a three. Us three? 
It's, it's a three. threefer. Yeah, I think it's so. Threefer. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what got me on this one was there was the one scene where uh, they come back into the, the room and yeah. she calls it the interrogation room. And I'm like, there's no such thing on the Enterprise. <laughs> She's well, calling right? it the interrogation no, because room. What? Is well, this is the one? second. This is the second time we've seen that room because Ooh. it was in the defend the defender. Remember on the defender, they yeah. used Troy and Riker <laughs> used that room to to interrogate the Romu uh, Romulan. Right? Oh, all right. Yeah, oh, they did God. use that before. Yeah, I and noticed poor that. Riker. Yeah. He gets pulled up, you know, to do another, you know, more legal duty. I'm like, you know, he gets pulled up to defend. And I said, well, he could have been a lawyer in another life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oof. But I have one no. thing I want to say. <laughs> Go say it. I want to say. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> say it. Say it. Oh, you jinxed it. Now she's stuck again. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way. Oh, <laughs> I did jinx it. <laughs> See, that's oh, what you get. Oh, my goodness. I was, oh. was oh, going to say are. that T TSA could have pulled out that hypo spray in a minute. I don't know why they missed that. I want to call out Star Trek security again for letting that big freaking thing come on board. TSA would have been uh, patting down at LAX so, in a minute. That wasn't Olivia de Halave. That was no, um, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons. Right? That was Gene Simmons from Gene Simmons, uh, the Rogue. Oh my gosh, she was in the Thornbirds, right? Yeah. 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 She was in a lot of Desiree. She yeah, she's lot. amazing. Yeah. I, yes. love her. <laughs> I love her. I mean, her she's so another much. reason why this episode is so yes. compelling because her job with that role, I mean, yeah. you're just watching like every twitch of her lip and every eye tick, you know? Like, I uh -huh. mean, she really plays this woman yep. on the edge of everything. And you're just like, oh, it's going to blow. She's going to blow any moment yeah, now, man. you know? When Papa we... named her <laughs> daddy, that was it. She was oh, oh. Talk about pushing a button. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Let me push a button. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Nora lost it. Nora lost it. That was, she, that was funny. The Admiral was like, this is, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't oh, want yeah. nothing to do with this no more. He walked out of there like somebody's <laughs> daddy when they turned the channel in the living room. He just got up. <laughs> he got up. His big old belly was out here. He was like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knew they were in trouble. <laughs> Daddy left the room. Uh oh, because when they get quiet and they don't have anything to say, it's like, oh, 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 oh you really yep. did it. Now. Then you know you're your daddy man. <laughs> what y'all say? What did y'all say to daddy? Oh my god. Okay, all right. We are almost halfway through this list, and we are almost halfway through our time. So <laughs> we better, we better keep it rolling. Giddy up. <laughs> Okay, Sister Yvette, are you ready to roll out number six? I am. Are you guys ready for number ready. six? Ready. Da, 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 da. It's Darmok. This is a Darmok was rated much higher on my list, but it came in at number six on the uh, on the sisters list. And uh, Sabrina. Was yeah, the there were three of us on this one. Yeah, um, this is one of the few episodes. This wasn't that... a four for. No, no, it's not on my Tag list. On it's not on Yvette's list. Okay, um, all right. But this is one of those ones that we have actually done an episode on our podcast of, and we don't mm -hmm. really take time to do specific episodes. So you know, this is one, and it it just hits differently, I think, for for me, um, because. What we've always talked about with Ahura and even Hoshi, you know, how that communications person is so important and so big. And now here we have this whole race, this whole world that cannot <laughs> talk to people. It's it's just incredible when you right. think about how important communication is, that this man would sit there, you know, hoping that he would give up to be able to communicate. So with Oscar winners, Oscar nominees. That was Everybody so boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was, that was the most boring. You need to change your name. I'm sorry. It was just the irony of the moment as you're trying right. to communicate and your Wi Fi is going in and out. It was in hilarious. and out. And I'm going, I'm going, Shaka. 
Yeah. The wall, no. There's right. nothing we can do. Perfect. <laughs> I love this episode. I mean, this will always be one of my favorite episodes because um, I love communication, you know, mm -hmm. and I love trying to find a way to communicate, excuse me, with most people, you know, if I can. And, um, you know, and, and the what a cool concept that, you know, that I never really thought about before that, you know, here's somebody, a, a whole society. I didn't that read that right. Metaphors and <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, who is jamming Sabrina's signal? Um, it's Garrick. I'm pretty sure it's Garrick. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so anyway, I I think that this episode is amazing. And um, and it was it's a truly Starfleet thing. Like, let's continue to try. I love how Picard was the one that was like, let's continue to try to find a way. The two captains. I mean, that, if I had to nitpick about anything on this episode, it would be that the people underneath it were not like, let's continue to try to find a way. They were all like, shoot it down, shoot, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I get the foil, I get the opposites set up, you know? So anyway, you know, we yeah. uh, we love Darmok. Yeah, it wasn't on my list, um, but it wasn't on my top 10 list. Of course it was on my list, but it just didn't make my top 10. Um, but of course, I mean, this is, this is the, this is the, I love it because of all the linguistics and I love it because of, um, oh, I can't remember now, but there's, <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of things about this. Um, okay. Forget it. Cause I can't remember, but <laughs> all I can remember is, is Jean-Luc's, I call it the Darmok coat, the Darmok jacket. So that's the, the first time we see the Darmok jacket. Oh, the jam the, the jacket is so the, the jacket oh. is, I mean, you could come just for the jacket, really. <laughs> right. Yeah, the jacket is everything. And and she meant that in a totally PG sense. And, and the jacket is everything. I really did. Yeah. I'm just gonna let that one ride. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move right on along. I think we should. <laughs> this could go a lot of places. Okay, number oh, five. No. You ready? This one is Yvette's favorite, you guys. I will yeah. not. Be, I have nothing to say. <laughs> number five. <laughs> now, number five is the inner light. Which Yvette calls that damn flute episode. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> I think. I think this is one that is, uh, it's a, it could be on any show. I mean, it doesn't even need to be a Star Trek episode because the Enterprise is not involved in this, basically. You know, at the one point where they try to help Picard, they actually almost kill him. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> uh, I think, and I, one thing I really love about this is that it's got a great guest star in it, the one that plays Bat Bataille. I, I love that guy. He's been in so many other little Star Treks. Mm -hmm. And then, so as soon as I saw Bataille, I was like, oh, I love this guy. <laughs> but uh, great actors. I mean, always. If we, even if they're not a Paul Winfield or a Gene Simmons, have these oh, Sabrina. great character actors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't even help you. I can't even help you to be a. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's what Sabrina said. Nothing. Exactly. Nothing. I can't even <laughs> see. You're all blank on my screen. Oh no. Oh my God. Oh no. Poor baby. She's uh, see, this is a professional right here. She's that's right. Through. Yeah. You got it. Well, I love this episode for most of what we heard from Sabrina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we heard most of that, um, <laughs> you know, and um, Yvette can hate her damn flute episode. I just think it's a, a, it's a really poignant and beautiful episode. I love the environmental focus of it. I mean, I thought, especially <laughs> for that time, you know, <laughs> I can't, I look. <laughs> Especially for that time. Yeah. Yvette, get yeah. it together. Be I saw respectful the of all the episodes, please. Oh, I'm very Yvette. respectful. That's why I'm not saying anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now stop cracking jokes in, in the middle. <laughs> okay. So anyway, yeah. Love it. It's a tearjerker. It's, um, you know, it's a beautiful human story and it's a great ecological story. And like I think, like I said, especially for that time, um, 
it was uh, saying a lot for us. So I just thought it was beautifully done and it makes me cry most times, you know? Yeah, I was glad Picard got to have a family even if it was only for 10 minutes. Yes, he got to have a family. He watched them grow up. I mean, like, can you imagine? Like, you know, we're just sitting here. Next thing you know, a beam comes down, shakes us. We're like, oh, I'm out, you know. And um, but in your head, you're living a whole nother life, a whole nother life. And then you come back, and and you're changed. And you know, um, and and Picard was changed after this episode. And this was one of those times when you saw. Uh, TNG finally getting to a character trait that they were continuing on, you know, not finally, but doing that, um, you know, they, it wasn't just a, like, I forgot what happened last week and I'm fine. No, you know, this stayed comes, with him. It comes back in other episodes, just like we said, that, that mm -hmm. flute, that dog on flute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it comes back in other episodes. Another episode that I, another one I won't speak about. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's one that you will speak about, right? Uh -oh, here got... we go. Hold on. Right. Mm -hmm. Number four, you guys. Oh, dun, 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 no. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> another one I won't. Measure right. of a man. There you go. This wasn't one of yours, Yvette? No, not at all. Oh, I thought. No, nope. you know when are we going to get to one of the ones that was? Um, it's a four, it's we're coming up. It's coming that's up. Why yeah. That's why they're four, three, two, and one because yeah. those yeah. are the only four. <laughs> well, I don't know this why that keeps three. coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Measure of a man is an important episode. It definitely is. Okay, is that it? <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. I'm afraid to say anymore. I'm thinking my wife is going to go out. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all she got. I thought. No, this was written by um, Melinda, Melissa Snodgrass. So, you know, Melinda. Yeah. Yep. Melinda. Melinda Snodgrass. Melinda, Melinda, uh, female writer. So I love all the ones that have either a woman behind the camera or a woman with the pen. Yes. So you know I'm going to pick those. Um, I we, let's, let's just say it. Guinan is key in this one. And I love a Guinan episode. And, you know, she only has this one scene, but that's all she needs. But she's going to bring it down to let me tell you what this is really about, Picard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hmm. Absolutely. I was just watching this one again um, recently, and I just remembered how much I love it because, you know, it's like, uh, you know, we're talking about slavery, you know, and, and it's like, oh, no, we don't say that word anymore. Yeah, you know, but if you're looking like Bruce Maddox is definitely looking down the line. Yes, he is. At making yeah. a whole bunch of these guys Ooh. and doing yep. what with them, you know, um, you know, cheap labor. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, and not looking at them like human beings. That's what I think yeah, about every time. I mean, even when I first saw it, like, even, huh? Even when I first saw this episode, you know, when uh, back in the day, that was all I could think about with it was, uh, you know, um, this is how black folks have, have been treated, that we're not actually human. This is one of the core tenets of slavery, that it's, it's, it is not human and therefore not worthy of any respect, right. you know, not worthy of shelter, not worthy of food, clothing, nourishment, uh, you know. And it goes down to, like we said, with the the offspring, you know, even mm -hmm. to the point of breaking up families, you know, it's a really clear line. So I, I just love this. I love this episode. And, uh, and, and to your and, uh, point, my, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I thought you were finished. Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say one of my favorite lines in it is, your honor, Starfleet was founded to seek out new life. Well, there it sits. Yeah. 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 And, and. And 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 to follow through with this, I mean, it follows through to offspring, but also follows through to um, the short track um, was um, <laughs> the Mars, the Mars one. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, we children, we see it, children we of Mars, or children of Mars. We see um, the they're not sentient, but you know, we see all of the um, automatons, the, the yeah, you know, the android like. Um, just in lines, they, they, you know, they were, they were just people, not even people, they were just workers, you know, tons and tons mm -hmm. of workers and no one had any feeling for them. They were just there, you know, and it, it came into fruition, maybe not as, as uh, sentient beings, but definitely as labor, 
you know, labor that no one cares about, which probably is very poignant <clears throat> right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. One thing I wanted to mention in this, two things that I loved about this one was, first of all, they brought something in from TOS, where you had this situation where a person had been tried at a court martial by someone they had had a previous relationship with. Like, what? Yeah, what, a little bit of contradiction there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did you not get yeah. to recluse yourself from that? I don't right. understand. <laughs> you know, we had Kirk go through this mess, and here goes Picard, too. You're in Stargate. Like, What's your girlfriend? But I did, I did like that they had an age-appropriate girlfriend for Picard. At Finally. Point. Yes. <laughs> for once. I, I will give them that. I love her. I want yeah, because, right, even her. Beverly's like 20 years younger than him or something, or supposedly, mm -hmm. I think, right? And she was, you know, she was really sassy, you know, so she was, given, she was giving oh, him likes, his He stuff likes the right sassy back. ones now. Yeah, yeah he, he does. Sure he does. He challenge. He the sex. Yeah. <laughs> but that was one of my favorite things. I mean, I was just the JAG officer. She was, she was, she made that episode. I mean, but her face when when Riker turned data off, I mean, she was yeah. just she was going through it. And when Picard pulled out the Tasha Yop, you know, hologram, and she was like, oh, he said we were intimate. And I, her face was unbelievable. That actress, I forget, I'm sorry I didn't look up her name, but she made that episode as great as it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I haven't watched that in a while, but I do remember her. Um, she definitely stood out in that episode. Definitely. Okay. Are you guys? <laughs> he sure does. He does. He really does. Red the whole family. Hair, has, has, you said his, bro his brother, his brother married a, a redhead sassy one too, right? Mar mm -hmm. Marie was sassy. True that. <laughs> 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 okay, we're moving. We're Shall moving. We? We're moving. Yeah, it's still one of my like. I, I, I will never not. I will never skip Measure of a Man when it's on. That's that yeah. one's always. It's okay. in season two, so I kind of forget it's there. Now we get to the good stuff. We get to the ones that were unanimous. Yes, and uh, <laughs> honestly, like as far as I'm concerned, you could just have a three way tie. With yeah. All yeah. Yeah. Pretty you much. Know, I, pretty I, much. Yeah. We just put them in an order because we had to. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely. These are definitely a three-way tie. There's. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. In in for our for us in our, and for us yeah. all together. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Ready. Da 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 da. Best of both worlds. Both Best parts. Of, parts one and, and two. two. One and two. <laughs> That's our number three. I'm just saying. When we watched this originally, and it was the summer of hell. Woo! <laughs> ended that damn show on a cliffhanger, and I was like, wait, what? Man. <laughs> wait a minute, though. Cliffhanger yeah. ever. <laughs> Man, I was like, wait, 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 what? <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> I remember being at the TV going, what? Wait, you have to come back. <laughs> The credits wait, wait. went up and we all <laughs> the credits screamed. were going. We were like, <laughs> right? Wait. We're looking at I like because I was in college at the time. So we all watched it in the community room. And I'm we're all looking at each other like, what? <laughs> we can't just end it here. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Still mad about that one. <laughs> okay, what's your what's what's your favorite part of that episode? What, I mean, what what is one of your favorite things about Best of Both Worlds? For me. Either one of you guys. Sabrina, you're back. Take it really fast before you go away. My favorite what? <laughs> I didn't even hear the question. And a favorite part of Best of Both Worlds. Okay. We lost her. Okay. She went away. So my favorite, there's a lot of, I have a lot of favorite parts. My favorite part is that cliffhanger. It is. It's because it shows how how they brought us in i mean it was you know you're sitting there watching it and you you're like you know it's like this every scene even with the commercials every scene you're getting closer and closer to the tv waiting to see what how are they getting him out you can't leave jean luc there you, you mm -hmm. can't you know <laughs> beverly is like trying to go get him Worf is pulling her back so you're invested in that first episode that first part and you're just like they got you. I mean, they got us good for that. And you had to mm -hmm. wait the whole damn summer. And remember, I remember that they didn't play it during the summer. 
if I remember correctly, I never saw it during the summer, like the reruns, mm. like they never played it for us. They played everything else but that one. So, yeah, that was the part. <laughs> it was Sabrina, so are you with us? A little bit. I can, I'm going in and out. Okay, so <laughs> do you have a favorite part of that, of, of Best of Both uh, Shelby, Worlds? Shelby was or my favorite, favorite part. Shelby was my favorite part in that. I loved her. I loved the actress. I loved yeah. the way she came in there. She was. I loved the way she was telling Riker he needed to get the, out of that seat if he didn't want to sit in it. That whole thing was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, love yeah, Shelby. Yeah. I, I loved. I thought she was great in there. I mean, she was the uh, tension. Yeah, you know that we needed. Um, in the you know outside of the tension that was already there, it was just such a. Such a great episode, you know. Um, I love that her character was written like, you know, as a fallible young officer, you know, with some some things to learn, with a lot of promise and some things to learn, you know. Um, I love Riker's response to her, you know, mm -hmm. because he was yeah. like, "Whoa, you're gunning for my seat," and mm -hmm. I don't know how happy I am about it. You know, yeah. I loved his struggles um, to lead the ship in the wake of a you know, of a disaster for their captain and such a, a huge presence, you know, I mean, I, I loved, I loved all, all of it. I loved Guinan's talk with, with him about like, you got to leave Jean-Luc behind and if you're going to lead this ship, you know, so, yeah. you know. I think it was great. Um, well, I said that already, but the, the great part of this is that it's good and bad. So we got the Borg. We knew the Borg was coming, um, I think, from the second season. So another follow through. Um, and then, of course, this starts everything. This starts the Borg thing, the, the mm -hmm. epicness that is the Borg. I mean, at that time, I was a little tired of the Borg by the time Voyager came. But when you look back, it's still good TV. You know, and mm -hmm. it's it's still good. I mean, we're still we are still talking about the Borg in uh, 20, 2023. So I think, you know, it's it was the, the best villain I've seen in a very, very long time. Um, and, it, and it's still hold, and they still hold up. So. Uh, yeah. And, and it's good because even. Up. Right. And it, this is like a farter. This this it's like. These two episodes, and then the next episode is family, which is supposed to, you know, it it plays on to this right away. Mm -hmm. And I think brothers are next, so it's it's more family, it's more personal stuff that's going on with the TNG cast. We get to learn uh, so much more about them. So, you know, it's yeah. like I, I said, also like them. It's it's great. It's great stuff. Yeah, I also liked all the directing in the board ship. You know. Um, Oh, we didn't talk about but that. But I thought it was hilarious though when the board <laughs> came in and, and captured Picard on the bridge. There were like <laughs> like three or four people on the bridge. Like that was it. The board were just like, let me just waltz on in. And well, you know, I mean well, it was hilarious. I was like, really? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah but still. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this that this episode won uh Best of Both World won, won the Emmy for Best Art Direction that year. So this, this well was should. a fantastic looking. I mean, the whole design, yeah. everything. So it just wowed every. I didn't. Nobody said it introduced them. We know that, but you know, this was the follow through. Yeah. Yeah. So no, mm -hmm. I agree with you, Sabrina. Like it was a. It, it should have won. It was a well deserved. You know. Well yeah, deserved. We Emmy. Okay, this. so yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Moving right along, uh, best of both worlds, parts one and two. That was number three. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Are you ready? The chat, the chat, the chat. I know the chat is killing me. You guys are chat hilarious. Me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> ready? Ready? Yeah, babe. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hey, hit it. Yesterday's yeah, Enterprise. baby. My That's number. Hey. <laughs> That is my well, favorite you know, I episode. think I think if we had to redo it again, I would put this at number one. I would either put this one or best of both worlds in the actual number one slot for myself personally. Mm -hmm. But like I said, all three of these for us were all unanimous and they could have gone anyway. Yeah. 
This, yeah. uh, ah. this is my this is number two on my list of all time. Uh, Star Trek of all time. So, oh. <laughs> I love Rachel Garrett. I love uh, Captain Garrett. I love everybody. I mean, yep. just a, another Frakes, another ship show. This is uh, the closest thing to a TNG mirror universe. If you know me, you know I love the mirror universe. Um, it is, um, I mean, novels, comics have come out of this. Um, it, it, the prune juice came out of this. Juice. You know, <laughs> I mean, the continuity is crazy because after this comes redemption, redemption two, and then unification two. You know, it, it just it, unfortunately brought Denise Crosby back just to kill her again. But you know, it's it's the first time. The I think it's the last time you see the initial uh, bridge crew together again um, because even Wesley is back. Yeah, so Wesley mm -hmm. is there and. Um, <sighs> wow, it's 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 really good. That just the look of it and the the way it rolls, the way it just plays out, it it is just I love everything oh. about this show. <laughs> when they start off with you know battle log combat, you know combat, it's like okay, wait a minute, no military log they called yeah. it. I was like, yeah, oh, we're yeah, yeah, in yeah. trouble over here. Yep, yep. yep. And that the line that really got me when Guinan says, "This is not a ship of war." It's a ship of peace. Mm -hmm. It kills me every time she says that. I just go, yeah, this is all messed up, and we got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah, yeah, I love that one. Oh, this one, yeah. Castillo, yeah, he cracks me up. My boy is like, I knocked into, this is literally a show where you were demonstrating how you can get knocked in the next week. Right. <laughs> And, you know, he gets knocked in the next week. They pull him out from under all this mess. He is smoking. His uniform is on fire. And he's still going to try to hit on people. Right? <laughs> you got to love talking. He came out. He was like, hey, girl. Hey, girl. You know, I'm still alive, girl, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I made it. He's still macking. He was still macking. He was still macking. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my goodness! I, I don't know. There's, I mean, everything about this, um, about this episode. You know, I, I love the fact that They're Tasha gets, um, <laughs> as a, as, as, as Guinan says, Tasha gets a, a death that uh, means something. You know, as yeah. opposed to the senseless death that they had when when they killed her off the first mm -hmm. time. Yeah. You know, you're gonna stupid, stupid, yeah. stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's the so that, it's okay. The scene that gets me is when they go, when they materialize on that bridge, and there's blood and the smoke and rocks everywhere. I mean, the rocks are taking them out. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, say, those rocks come down. The rocks kill Captain Garrett. The rocks kill Riker. It's like where are these rocks coming from? <laughs> Riker. I mean, they did my boy in. Wow, they they just wow. They have no they had no love for Riker. I mean, he was, his neck was all out. I was like, oh poor Riker. <laughs> yeah, this, I um, mean, I, we could say a lot about uh, a lot more about yesterday's Enterprise. I mean, it's just oh god. Um, it gets so, me in the feels, and then of course, does, you know, yeah. like my favorite, one of my favorite things about it is that this is where Worf is introduced to prune juice. I mean, I, yes. I just love it. Yeah, we Whoa. know she doesn't die. We're talking about the episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, boy. Two other things. Two other things. One other thing I loved in this one is when the first time the, I think the the Klingons hit the ship to see, <laughs> and Tasha and Cecilia they just jump into the seats. I mean, they actually literally hopped over the chairs into the seats. Yeah, yeah. I, yep. yep. I love that one. They just were like, yep. "Ooh, <laughs> start shooting." <laughs> you know me. I love oh, you, I love pew pew pew. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the um the one thing while when we close out, there, there's a thing that I like when I watch this. I I look at this last scene when you see Jordy. And uh -huh. Guinan talking at the end. Do uh -huh. you notice that he is not our Geordie? He is the military Geordie. And I don't think anybody realized. I did notice that. that. I just noticed that on this um watch through. I was like, what's different here? That's right. different. Right. <laughs> so he so Geordie, some 
the majority from the military side just decided to stay or <laughs> I don't know if our Jordy liked the look. <laughs> I don't know what was going on, but yeah. So I don't know if he ever went back. If we, if this is their Jordy, I, I don't know what's going on with that, but next time you watch it, check out Jordy's uniform. And I'm like, uh, yeah, everybody that's says the wrong uniform, like, buddy. <laughs> It's a costume error. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Okay, we're winding down to yes the, the top one. The top one. Everybody's the top screen. one. The one that got the last one, and that one is da 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 cause and effect. That is the last one on our list. Mm -hmm. That's it. And like we said again, the caveat is. I mean, these really could have been in any order, you know, um, but these were the these three episodes were the ones that were unanimously on all of our lists. Yeah. Um, this was the yeah, yeah. best wow. opening wow. sequence of any episode I have ever seen. <laughs> like, what is going on? Do you know that people actually call TV stations mm -hmm. to say that there was something wrong with the if the I knew the number, it would have been me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I remember that. <laughs> it's like uh, it's stuck. It's stuck. It's it's doing it again. Oh my god! What's wrong with my TV? <laughs> <laughs> this is my um, all-time favorite Star Trek episode yep. of all episodes. This is the one. This, like uh, Drumhead, I did not. I did not see the first time. I don't ever remember seeing it when it came out. No, I did. I did see it when it came out. Yeah, I did. I did. I saw this one when it came out, but I had no idea what the hell was going on. I was so confumbled. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what I was watching because you can't go back. You know, you're watching it right away. And I'm like, wait, wait, what happened? And I don't, I don't think I saw it again until I'm pretty sure I didn't see it again until I did the rewatch on Netflix because it would come on BBC. But, you know, you catch it in the middle, you know, at the end. And if it's at the middle, you're like, well, I still don't know what's happening. So I don't want to watch it. And then I finally got to see it where I got to see it over and over again. And I was hooked. <laughs> I was just totally hooked about that. Another oh. Freaks. Another Freaks. Director. Another Freaks. Yeah. Another Freaks. Yeah, another yes, ship Jamal. Show. Jamal mm. Beverly did put her glass too close to the table every time, <laughs> even <laughs> though she knew that something was chiggity. Oh, God. And, you know, <laughs> she was like, but she still put the New York thing. glass. On the when she moved it and she knew it was going to break and it still broke, I said, oh, my God, we're so messed up here. We're never going to get out of this thing. <laughs> I and then what you all think like it's gonna be a three in a jack and a jack. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the best poker scene ever, um, going over and over again. I love that it's the same exact scene, mm -hmm. seen from different angles. Yeah, and the fact that it, the way it changes, so it changes drastically, and it it it's not contrived. So it changes right. because they are figuring right. things out. So I love that. I love that it's not they're not trying to make it the show that it is. It is just falling in place, you know, and it's just, you know, I love the fact that I love the time. Um, and I remember people saying, oh, it's, or I can't remember who said it. It's like uh, Groundhog Day. But then I looked it up. I was like, they came out way before Groundhog Day did. So of course, another, another Trek first, you know, but I just, oh, I love it. And I, I think I find out new things every time I watch it because they're all very, very subtle, you know? Because yeah. um, yeah. isn't this I love. Oh, go ahead. Uh -huh. no, okay. I was about to say, I loved watching this like, on the original run through because mm -hmm. I was one of those people that when it came back from commercial and you're doing the same scene over again, I'm like, wait, what, what happened to my TV? You know, mm -hmm. but then, you know, I, I love, um, I love science fiction and fantasy, right? And I've been le reading that my whole life. So it's a like, I just want to keep digging to find out what's going on. Like I right. knew, you know what I mean? Like I knew something, I was like, this is going to be a good one, but it had me 
from that first commercial. So it had me from the opening, but then it had really had me mm-hmm. from that first commercial break. And I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was a good Guinan episode. You're <laughs> yeah, right, it Brian. It was, yep. Yeah, what, I mean, I, it's I love such about a good this. episode. What it shows in this one, and we've seen it in a few other Star Treks, when someone on this ship thinks something is wrong, everybody mm-hmm. listens. That yes. always mm-hmm. gets me. You know, even when Warp yes. was saying, you know, I'm dizzy back in parallels, I'm dizzy, something's up, I don't know what's going on. They were like, you know what? All right, let's go see what we can find out. Let's go see if there's a temple of nominee. They didn't say, right. you just sit down and shut up, you know, and, you know, that somebody's saying something's not right. And, and the, Everybody just snapped to, and they were like, okay, yeah. we're out here in space. Could be something's up. <laughs> Anybody see an anomaly? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just go look for some anomalies. <laughs> Data comes up. <laughs> all the voices. I was just like, I love this crew. Mm-hmm. They always listen to the one saying, uh-uh. <laughs> Yep. Mm-hmm. And I did, I also, it has, as has been pointed out in the chat, you know, like I did love the fact that this was a, from Beverly's point of view, most of the time, you know, mm-hmm. like, and, you know, is another Beverly centric show, but not like a, not a patronizing Beverly centric show. <laughs> right, you know? right, 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 Beverly right. being smart Beverly that she is, you yeah. know, and, and putting some pieces together and also not being afraid to speak up and, and to use that clever mind of hers, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, even if she did put that stupid glass on the edge of the table every time. <laughs> yeah. Well, it couldn't, it couldn't change. That was the thing. It couldn't change. I, Cause I was like, why does she keep doing it again? But she doesn't know she's doing it again. You know, I, so yeah, but I, I, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but they, oh. you know what I love is that they changed, um, they changed every way that she told Jean-Luc. It was weird. Like that part, like every time she told him every, it was different every single time. Right, and I, right. I didn't, I never realized that until this last watch, which is what I love because every time I watch it and I've watched it a lot, it, <laughs> it is, um, it is a different it's different because I, f- I find new things. So it's, mm-hmm. it's awesome. My it's favorite, awesome. My favorite line is when <laughs> Picard asks Data how far off they are with the clock. And he, <laughs> here's how long they've been in this loop. And my boy just pulls the jacket down and just says, we set the clock. <laughs> <laughs> right? He, like go, he goes to the edge of the seat yeah, and goes, right. we set the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and poor Frazier. <laughs> oh my god that was great that was what you know oh my god when we got Frazier I was like oh we got him for all of like five seconds five you seconds. know <laughs> like you're gonna have to reset more than the clock my man <laughs> right. and, and let's not talk about the fact that they blow up the enterprise four times Woo! killing me <laughs> yikes Oh, killing me over killing and I mean they blow off. up it they blow up it it gets blown up differently four separate times. It's not blowing up and then showing it over and over again. <laughs> wow. I'm like, oh, this is I mean, good. that's a nightmare when I you never was, when you this hear was a lot of all fun. the abandoned Thank ship. You. Like, oh, right. no. Yeah, just hearing those words gave me like a heart attack, you know, um, yep. when we fir- when we first heard it, because that's something that we never hear. But it is time for okay. us to wrap this up, you guys. And yep. um, <gasps> we thank you all for hanging out with us and having fun yep. with us. It's been a blast to hang out with you all and to see everybody, um, you know, uh, from the Chat Pack fam and everybody Yay. else. So thanks, guys. We love you and we'll see you next time. And don't oh, stay tuned for the rest of VTC4. Peace, love, and hair grease.